chat. Hello, how's it going? Welcome to another week of the Scrim School Scrimcast. If you are new here, I am your host, Bobby Sox. I do PvP things, decent at best. Uh, but that is why we host this, is so that we can have guests on here that uh, play way better than I do, so that I can learn with you guys as well. So the topics we're gonna go over today mm -hmm. Uh, are going to be a lot of subclass conversations, some conversations about what we hope on the upcoming TWAB, uh, 120s versus 140s versus 180 hand cannons, uh, meta changes, things like that. Make sure to stick around. The first hour or so, we're just going to be talking with the guests. You guys can ask questions as we go. Then hour two, you guys can jump in, play with these two uh, these two teachers of the week, and hopefully learn some things. Let's, uh, let's undefin and bring them on in here. Gentlemen, gentlemen, how's it going? Yo, yo, what's up? What's going doing? down? Oh man, you guys, thanks for being here tonight. I'm, I'm pretty hyped about this. I'm yeah, looking dude. forward to it. Thanks for having us. For sure. Yeah, yeah. So let's start it off. Uh, do some intros. Who are you? What makes you tick? It doesn't have to be in-game only. Uh, what do you guys like to do? What's got your interests? Uh, no, you get it. Yeah, you got it. If you want to go first. All right. Um, my name is Next Up Nova. Um, I stream live at twitch.tv slash nextupnova. Um, out of out of streaming gaming, I'm a graphic designer. Um, I love I love design and all that, and a little bit of motion graphics. Um, but uh, I really do enjoy you know PvP, PVE, all aspects of the game. So yeah, nice. Um, so my name is Lemur. Um, I do a lot of PvP streaming. I love PV stuff, but we I think we all know how D2 is sometimes we all kind of burn <laughs> through it and then we all kind of yeah. start doing PvP again. So um yeah, so I, I mainly do PvP, uh, a lot of trials carries, all that kind of stuff. Um outside of streaming and everything like that, I am a college student, so this is my final year of school. So going to my final semester. And uh other than that, that's about it, man. Oh let's go, dude. Streaming. What do you uh what's your major? Oh, I'm in uh, aerospace engineering, so Damn. It's pretty tough, but yeah, no, this year, this is my final year, my final year is pretty chill. So, okay, um, you got yeah, that my same third year, I was getting railed, but uh, this year, I'm kind of just taking electives and chilling, so not too bad. You looking at more like towards Lockheed or uh, uh, private contractors um, or what? So, uh, right now, I'm planning on going to grad school next year, and that'll be about a year or two program, and then after that, I'm not sure yet. It's uh, kind of a changing market right now with like mm -hmm. a lot more stuff coming out each and every single day so who knows how it's going to be two years from now um i think probably like my dream job would probably be like working for jpl like jet propulsion lab uh, okay. or maybe like blue origin or uh spacex something like that a little private sector we'll have to see i don't know i don't know yet. are we gonna see but uh <laughs> but yeah no Dude, so that's that's me pretty much in that's a huge that's dope actually yeah. um thanks man that's that's super cool. I've had some I've had some interesting types on here, but uh, I don't think I've ever had a future aerospace engineer. That's pretty cool. Oh, well, hey man, <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're here now. I'm excited for tonight. It'll be fun. Yeah, it's gonna be a good time. Yep. So uh, we're gonna kick it off. Um, we'll start out. Let's start out with mains. Well, actually, let's reel it back a little bit more. When did you get into D2 and how? Uh, no, you you got it. If you just want to go like first and right, yeah, yeah. um. So I started Destiny in general back in the dark below, like basically a week before Crota's end. Um, and I've been pretty hooked ever since to the game. Um, yeah, just, you know, back in back in dark below, um, I had a bunch of friends who would uh, tell me all about this game called Destiny, and I never really thought much of it. And then I got into it and I really started to understand the hype. <laughs> yeah, I, I was... Uh... I was similar in that aspect where I also joined Dark Below. I joined like, like in like February between like House of Wolves and Dark Below. So like year year uh, D one year one, and then but like D one I wasn't like super into PvP or anything like that. I was just kind of like just kind of like chilling, you know, just doing PVE with my mm -hmm. friends. That was pretty much it. Just like raided, like I was getting carried to the lighthouse <laughs> in D one. <in> <laughs> but uh, yeah, and then D two. Um, obviously played when it came out and then I think we all know how year one of D2 went so it was pretty uh, <laughs> pretty ass and then uh, and then uh, eventually once cross save came out I switched to PC and then I played on PC for a couple of months and then eventually I started streaming and that's how how we got into it nice man that's a 
so that's crazy both of you guys started at the same time this is my little yeah. uh my little flex on on the guests every single week is uh i still have the destiny first look alpha test on my playstation yeah dude like i what? heard about it i think i heard about it like i like when bungie because i was a big halo guy mm -hmm. right like when i was so i already knew about bungie and everything like that and i heard about destiny i don't know why i didn't get it i just like maybe i was just busy in my life i just like wasn't playing video games as much as i was before but then like eventually my friends like started playing it and they're like yeah this game's crazy and i was like ah like sure i'll try it out and i was <laughs> oh, like ah oh, yes <laughs> now i'm obsessed <laughs> yeah bungie's had me by the uh the cojones since the original halo yeah so when yeah, I, I think <laughs> I got my first Xbox or I got my first Xbox 360 when I was in like fifth grade. The first game I got was like Halo 3 and like mm -hmm. I was just like obsessed with that ever since. And then I just like, you know, kind of honestly, it got me into space too. <laughs> kind of funny. So all the know. space magic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hell yeah. That's dope. Good to hear. Um, all right. Let's uh, <laughs> Panda says defined fun. <laughs> uh masochism is the word you're looking for that's what we do when we turn this on every time and go into trials <laughs> <You literally. laughs> yeah <laughs> all right let's dive into the uh the nitty gritties so let's talk mains what's your main class what do you like to run all right um all day warlock occasional titan um all day, usually top tree dawn or chaos reach. Um, I primarily lately have been using a shoddy. I used to snipe, but yeah, I've been very, I'm more of an aggressive player. So I've kind of transitioned into using a shoddy. Mm -hmm. um, for me, if you asked me this last season, I would say like Warlock 100% all the time. But this season, like it was like stasis and everything like that. It's kind of <laughs> like, yeah, it, I kind of had to change things up. Um, this last week, I played Top Tree Dawn for the first time this season for Trials, and like it went well, kind of. But the weeks before that, I was just running Hunter with Stasis. You know, it's just it's like pretty broken. Yeah. So it's kind of like you kind of have to use it if you're like you know trying to carry and stuff. And like mm -hmm. uh, I, I really like Titan too. I haven't been able to like get into it that much with the Titan Stasis, but like I feel like once they nerf uh shadow dive with the glacial nade combo i feel like titan stasis is definitely gonna be the best so yeah, i think i, I want to like i want to get more on that um but i'd say my favorite class i would still say probably top down warlock like sniping probably is still my like my main if i had to say anything yeah oh thank god definitely like my my most like comfortable <laughs> class like for sure that makes me so happy because every single time i have guests on here i end up always pulling double hunters really and the only reason i have a warlock is for scrim school <laughs> yeah so i can actually play my main um i've been a hunter main since the very beginning with the exception of the taking king uh the king's fall raid i had a titan just so that i could have weapons of light that's it <laughs> yeah yeah i i think when i when i started d1 i was a hunter main and then i like, remember how it worked was like you you ah. I don't even know how to like say it. I just remember like you couldn't get like sometimes you would get legendary gear to drop and like it wasn't for your class. Yep. So like the first yeah. legendary piece of gear I ever got was like a Titan mark, or, like a Titan helmet <laughs> or something like that on my hunter, and I was like, all right, fuck it, I'm making a I'm making a hunter. <laughs> I right. was like, screw it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um but yes, yeah, so, or I'm making a Titan. So then so then yeah. So that's kinda how I was I was always really a hunter main, but then once they came out with like Top Tree Dawn, the movement was just so good. And I was just like, all right, we're making the switch. Yeah, I don't blame you. Warlock's fun, especially with Top Dawn. The movement yep. is so much fun. Yeah, yeah. and like stasis wise, I still think uh, I still think it's better than stasis because like this the stasis for Warlock is like okay, and like it was super OP when when it came out, obviously, but they nerfed it right. And like yep. compared to the other two, it's definitely like not as good in my opinion. So I think I still think Top Tree Dawn is what you want to run or Chaos Reach, like Nova was no, saying. We're gonna get into yeah. that for sure. Don't worry um that's that is 100 percent on our list is uh the balance for warlock classes because you guys are both warlock mains what uh how you're feeling about chaos reach and mm -hmm. dawn blade and yeah. god whatever the stasis warlock attack is called and why you guys don't run something like nova warp <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, <that's> a... Ooh. <laughs> is that a stinging subject yeah talking nerf <laughs> right on uh all right, let's uh let's keep it rolling. So, um, 
A hot topic every single week is uh, shotguns. I'm gonna hit up Lycan's question first because he always gets upset when I don't ask him right away. Um, <clears throat> how do you guys feel about shotguns right now? Do you think that something like an aggressive frame should not have quick draw? Um, me personally, like, I feel like a lot, a lot of the complaints I see in like my chat and stuff like that are people being like, oh, like, like I remember like I'll kill someone with like fell and and people be like, oh, like fell and crutch or something like that. I'm like, and the <laughs> only reason it like seems like a crutch right now is because it's literally like the only aggressive frame in the game a yeah. apart from uh astral that can get quick draw you know what i mean that actually that has, has nothing rolls. to pair with <laughs> yeah so like there's no, so if, if there was more guns that we can actually use that were like aggressive frames like high impact frames you know like a like maybe if they brought back the matador or like the party crasher or something like that from mm -hmm. d1 then i think it people really wouldn't care because but i feel like it's a problem now because not everyone has it so you know what I mean? Like, like no one's complaining about a door because everyone right. has a door. You know what I mean? So like, yep. I, I feel like no one would really complain about filters if everyone just had filters. But I totally see why that would be annoying. You know, like, like it's you, like I, I hate to say it, but like a CQC definitely like cannot compete. Oh, um, like it's not CQC. bad, but like like it's good if you don't have a filters. But like, you know what I mean? Like you're definitely yep. not gonna run over filters. So I, like, I don't know, man. My CQC has quick draw and Vorpal on it. <laughs> and uh, it's got accurate I, mean, I got the roll and i've I find... used it for a while man and like sometimes it i mean hey if it feels good for you like you know yep. it's more power to you but for me it just like wasn't it wasn't my uh, cup of tea you know i was finding fellow um, was uh was leaving them one more often than not when i was barrel stuffing i don't know if it was the spread pattern or what but yeah I like that, that is in. annoying too like you do always have to ads with phoners which is different mm -hmm. um so like that and that is kind of annoying that's honestly i like astral more Oh, yeah. owners i just hate the fact that uh you, it's a kinetic which blows because yep. um because I, I i really like my astral it's like i have like a god roll one that i got last season and i really really like it but um i just can't use it because now right now the meta right now is 120s right so yep. there's no there's no 120 energy which is another topic in and of itself <laughs> yes but, um, it is <laughs> yeah so that's uh there's hints and rumors that there will be an energy 120 there probably will be there's no way i mean if there isn't i will be very surprised i mean then again i thought there was going to be a trials hand cannon this season but <laughs> yeah i'm surprised that didn't happen <laughs> i You're thought they were right. gonna make an energy trials hand cannon but i guess not that would have been amazing actually that probably would have brought uh would have brought people yeah, yeah. back in it which, definitely would have yeah, for sure which rolls us into our next topic uh what so this is always a fun one too um what uh Obviously, the the PvP um, ecosystem is pretty low. So, what do you think? If you had if you had one say to Bungie right now, what would you say that you think would work to bring people back into PvP from PVE or to the game in general? Um, here, Nova. If you want to go, you can. I kind of right. last one. Um, so if if I had to choose one thing, I mean, there's a lot of things, but one specific thing. I mean, obviously something to grind for consistently you know like something that you have to you know work really hard for you know instead of something you just get and you're done right so you know it could be anything an emblem a shader or anything like they had the scarab emblem back in destiny one people would spend months grinding for that you know just pretty much anything that uh you know people could chase for that would take a while um and that would actually be worth it Okay. Yeah, so along that line, I'm kind of the same way, but okay, so Destiny at its core has always been about one thing, and that one thing is always going to be loot, no matter what, whether you're yeah. PvE or PvP, no matter what you're doing, um, it's always loot. So the thing, of, think of why so many people were mad this, this season, was be, or when Beyond Light dropped, was because there was like little to no loot, right? There was like, we only got like a handful of new weapons, like, like Season of the Hunt weapons were like, there were new ones but they weren't really that good and they weren't really what people wanted you know what i mean like they just updated these they just made these big sandbox changes to like 120s and like they didn't even like include any you know what i mean so it's just kind of crazy um so i think the one thing that will bring i mean i kind of i've already talked about this and like uh, other stuff too but like it kind of leads into trials loot honestly mm -hmm. i think if the trials loot was better then i think we wouldn't be having the problem that we have now because right now what i'm seeing what a lot of people talk about is they're saying like a really casual player or a person you know that maybe like 
is super hardcore PvE, but doesn't play a lot of PvP or something like that. Doesn't really play Trials that much. And they say every t every single time they go into Trials, it, it's just like a massive sweat fest and they hate it. And Trials needs like a massive overhaul. Like loot isn't going to do that. Like it's just the playlist itself sucks. And I'm like, I don't agree with that at all because I think the playlist is fine. The reason why it sucks right now for so many people is because the population is so low. So you keep playing the same people over and over again. And the only people still playing it are the, are the PVP sweats, you know, are the people who just like PVP. So like, you're not going to find that casual guy who just does PV all the time. You know what I mean? You, you don't, you're not going to have those teams. And the reason, in my opinion, like why that is, is because the loot right now is terrible. Like for trials, like there's really no reason to go flawless, like at all, really, because if they're just yeah. going to rotate, if they're just going to rotate the loot, like, for example, you could have a summoner be the be a gift or be the drop for the flawless chest mm -hmm. like one week. But like the next week, it could be like game three. You know what I mean? So it's yep. like if they can just get it on game three, why even go flawless? And that also leads into um, adept, adept loot. And I think the adept loot is terrible, too. It, it's not it's it's yeah, it's not good at all for what it needs to be. Honestly, what I think they should do to change it is they should really just um, like I've heard mixed opinions. This is what I think would be best is if they made it so they add up rolls or curated rolls like from D1 where, you know, when you got to when you got when you got when, when you went to the lighthouse and got it to drop, like, you know, what you're getting, you know what I mean? So yeah. like for that, for the yeah. Astral, for example, like right now, I think it's they think they said it was bugged, but like it's supposed to be if you go flawless, you get the added weapon. Of that week to drop like if you just keep going flawless over and over again you can keep grinding the rolls but right. like the state of the game right now is that the casual players or people who don't really play pvp that much can barely even get to like three wins let alone flawless so like like yeah. it, 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 it's just, it is just so unbelievably like like not even worth it to do that you know what i mean <laughs> um and so it, it just doesn't make any sense so i think it what they should do is just make it so um the gun you get or let's say it's an astral for example the adept astral weekend when you go flawless you get a curated adept astral it's got like quick draw opening shots with you know every single other perk that's like deemed the god roll or whatever and if they even want to step it up a notch they could even make it so you know it has like two perk slots kind of what they did with felloners you know where you can have like vorpal or opening shot or something like that and that would be really cool and i feel like so many people would play just to get that gun because one that's like another replacement for fell hunters you know mm -hmm. that's like uh that, that's something right there they can use it's literally the same gun for the most part um and then also and then, and then but i feel like bungie doesn't do that because they want people to keep playing the game you know they want to add they want people to not just like go flawless once and stop so what they could do is they could just um they can bring back uh, or keep keep it up with those like add mods so new week you know new mods so like if you don't really want a weapon that week or whatever maybe you got what you want you know you can just keep going flawless again every week to get the mods keep trying so, to farm for those mods yeah i, yeah, I think like at the end of the day it's gonna make it like it, i just feel like it's gonna incentivize people to play the game again because right now it's just like like if i didn't if i didn't stream honestly if i didn't stream i probably wouldn't be playing trials right now and i don't right. blame you if you're not you know what i mean so like it's just i feel like there's so much more they could do and then also with the add mods too like they could i i like i don't know like it's different for controller obviously you know because you have like the targeting adjuster and that kind of stuff but like for mouse and keyboard like on pc like i'm personally just like never going to take off icarus so yeah. like like i you know what i mean like there needs to be like two mod slots too i think i think that would make them really cool if it was like two mod slots and curated roles i feel like people would definitely grind for them yeah i mean i i 100 agree it's first off i think icarus should be an intrinsic perk absolutely should be an intrinsic perk um i think Icarus should be an intrinsic perk and i think traction should be as well uh but that's obviously my opinion on it um as far as trials goes from what i see like the mods are cool but the the like the balance of the mods themselves don't feel as potent i guess as they did in d1 yeah does that make sense mm -hmm. um they just don't feel uh they don't feel the same you lose out on an icarus you, you know something like that which is huge i mean there's not very many weapons that i'll run without icarus on it i agree i think um i think if they made icarus intrinsic then that's a different story but like right now it's just like like the difference like the, the, there's reasons like you don't run exotics because of icarus you know what i mean so like that that is an issue as well you know um so maybe that's a reason why bungie doesn't really want to 
uh yeah and put acres on everything is because you know like it, everyone would just might just use ace of spades you know what i mean because one of the downsides of ace of spades is because it doesn't have icarus mm -hmm. so like maybe it's like a balancing thing too i don't really know um but i, I definitely think it should just be on everything um for sure but yeah I, I think that would definitely help out the loot i think that would bring more people back to trials and i like for example like when it was bannerfall weekend like the first weekend of trials and the population was high it, yep. it was so good like that weekend felt great Oh, it's so great. Like ever ever yeah, since honestly. then the popul yeah the population has gone down more and more because people don't really care about the loot and so it's just like now it's like i've played the same team like three times or four times in a <laughs> row and we were all on different yep. wins like like it last weekend like it was literally crazy and we beat them every time and i felt like terrible because they were they were probably just like an lfg team just trying to play trials and it was just like right it just sucked yeah. you know what i mean and like they're probably thinking oh, i hate trials like you know what i mean it's just like three more people who probably hate the game mode now and yep. it just sucks because yeah well i mean it's either they're lfg and they get steamrolled or i mean i haven't seen very many people obviously besides you know you that aren't running stacked through trials yeah i, I yeah i'm borderline going crazy yeah, yeah, it's like, like uh, it, it's, it's, it's pretty it's pretty rough out there. Like, not gonna lie. <laughs> I mean, it, it I played tough. it. I played it uh, Tuesday morning right before reset, um, and uh, I think we only made it to like second win. First, it was super early mm -hmm. in the morning, but second, it was like it was literally every single team was just three stacked, super sweat, you know, going for it with stasis and yeah. Uh, and empowering rifts and 120s and they were just sitting yeah. in the corner yeah it's, it's very annoying yeah, mm -hmm. like, i like i border like i didn't stream monday because like i was just so pissed off from like sunday <laughs> i was just like i was just like i can't do this i was just like sad i was like right. you know what i mean it was just i don't know it was just rough because it's just like i don't know like it it really is all you play now it's all just like either stacked recovs or like an lfg team just trying to play or just like a just stack team just playing trials and like which is good because you know sometimes people will back out for me and that kind of stuff yep. um, but yeah a lot of people have definitely stopped doing carries and like i don't blame them you know it's definitely like it's definitely tough right now it's definitely very tough like i feel like i'm like playing a tournament like every single time right i'm like running a card you know so it's like definitely tough i i 100 agree with you it's it's in a weird spot it really is yeah um, and then like and then there's like cheating too right which is another topic but it's like yeah. um like honestly i didn't really play a lot of cheaters until like last weekend or like this weekend so i, I think and i think the only reason why we're playing a bunch now is because the population is so low like i don't think it's because there's just more cheaters i think it's just because no one's playing the game so we just encounter them more but like like the first two weeks of trials i like barely played any or this season, I mean, this season, like I was like, oh wow, the cheaters went down a lot, and then yep. now that the population's dying, I've definitely played a lot more. And um, right, <laughs> yeah, it's just like so. I think that I think it's definitely a problem that Bungie needs to figure out. Obviously, with anti cheat, but honestly, I'd rather them incentivize other things first than fix mm -hmm. that. Um, because right now it's like I'm not playing a cheater like every match. Like when I play them, obviously it's annoying, but I would rather like have more people in the playlist and like you know and people enjoying it. And them Agreed. just like, you know, kicking out like a hundred so people or whoever, however many cheaters there are, you know? Agreed. I mean, if you look at the stats for last week's trials, I think it hit a max of 140k across all three platforms for the weekend. Yeah. yeah. That's the entire I think, weekend. <laughs> I, I think Radiant Jeez. Cliffs, there was like 2100 on PC. Yep. Like 2100 teams or, or, or people or something like that. Like it was not a lot. Yeah. It's wild. Um, I'd love to see it back. I think... I think Trials has the potential to be one of the best game modes for PvP. I well, really honestly, it's like the only game mode because I feel like they I feel like I just feel like Bungie isn't gonna like the, 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 it's not a PvP game, you know what I mean? So they're never gonna go full yeah. into PvP, which I totally understand. Um, but at the same time, PvP is what like I said earlier, PvP is what keeps people playing the game. So like when when there's that constant drought, you know, when people do play through everything people look to twitch and or they look to pvp and they that's what they watch and that's what they do it's just because you know it's like the only i don't want to say it's the only bit of content in the game that's like replayable but it's like if i could run if i could run strikes or play play crucible i'd probably rather play crucible you know what i mean right. um and that kind of goes with what nova was saying where you can add you know like replayability like reasons for it so like 
if you could add some maybe some like new weapons to like a crucible loot pool where if you just want to play quick play you you know for example like is luna in d1 you mm -hmm. could get it to drop just from playing oh God. you know quick the play. amount of so like if they added it, yeah if, yeah if they added guns like that <laughs> where it was only in crucible and if you just played crucible you know you enjoyed doing it you, you know you had a chance for it to drop or for example something like strikes you know maybe you don't like pvp um maybe you do like strikes so then they add weapons to the strike loophole where if you just run strikes you have a chance for a drop there's like skeleton keys in d1 and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff they just like didn't include so it's just uh just sad you know but uh i'm hoping they'll make some good changes this next season with that big loot update they're doing i i hope so too um nova how do you feel do you think they're gonna bring something like uh um something like playlist specific loot I know yeah. I've been hearing rumors about it, obviously. I mean, I was hearing um, stuff about Palindrome and right. uh, a lot of D1 weapons being brought back. But honestly, for me personally, as much as, you know, I'd like Palindrome to come back and the old weapons to come back, I'd really like new stuff, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. New stuff would be great. Having new, having new things would be great. But yeah, like, like, like old stuff is cool. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And like I, I, like, I like the fact that they have old stuff you know what i mean that if they want to just like you know bring back but they should never really only bring back new old stuff and like use it as new stuff you know or like use it as right. like content for that season like like if they're gonna bring back if they're gonna say let's say they bring back weapons for, for next season right let's say they bring back like like let's say they make new 15 new weapons or something like that or they're bringing next season if like half of them are d1 and like half of them are new i feel like i wouldn't really like that i feel like i would only like it if it was like maybe like a third of them are d1 and like two thirds of them are like right. you know d2 because like right now it's like i had fun with those weapons and that was great but like i still want new stuff you know this is a new game like we already we've already paid for that stuff we've already played mm -hmm. that game it's a new you know what i mean it's like if i'm gonna pay for a new expansion and like I'll, or a new season or whatever like i want something new to the game you know that can bring some variety in so True. As, yeah just like nova yep. saying as much as i like new stuff or old stuff you know palindrome was a great gun i loved it in d1 but like new stuff would be awesome yeah. as well and no i kidding. think they shouldn't really use old stuff as a as a way to like be like here's your new content when it's not really new you know? <laughs> um yeah. we brought new here it is um let yep. me let me build off of that though uh i know while it feels old to us um there are obviously there's guardians that have not played d1 uh so to them it does feel new so do you think bungie's doing that kind of balance for those that, that stepped in at point. d2 versus d1 you know guys that didn't never got to play the dark below and go against alec cool guys that you know never got to play vault of glass or try and get the necrochasm things like that like okay i kind of get that but at the same time like if that's what they're doing they're kind of doing a shitty job in my opinion <laughs> like like they're like if they're bringing like you know if they want to give people the d1 experience by like bringing back one gun or something like that you know what i mean it's sure. like it's like i don't really think that's that's what it is i think why d1 was so good is because of what we talked about earlier where it had this replayability and these weapons you could grind for and there was so much more to do and all that kind of stuff like it was it wasn't just like you know i don't know you you how it is now in d2 where the loot isn't really there but it, like you know i don't know i feel like d1 there's so many more methods of getting loot and all that kind of stuff in different ways to to get guns and get armor and that kind of stuff in the game than there is in d2 and i feel like that's what made d1 really really cool in my opinion Absolutely. um mm -hmm. but yeah and d2 like if they're just bringing back d1 stuff to like give people like the d1 experience like maybe exotics and like maybe a few like like palindrome for sure um but like i don't know i i don't think them bringing back like some random ass like like you know gun that no one really like exotic <laughs> or something like that from d1 that no one really used that much like that's not you know what i mean like, like, i'm, trying to I'm bringing one. back dreg's promise yeah it's like it's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like come on or even like plan c it's like dude like you know i, I don't really no one really cared about that but if it's like gallahorn it's like okay you know yeah. it, it kind of depends on what it is um, right so i guess we'll have to see what what bungie's plans are you know yeah but, i mean I, yeah we've uh well obviously we haven't had a twa because of the uh um the holiday which mm -hmm. i respect the shit out of that they get time with their families my company's yeah, the sure. same way um what I mean, Dylan's been putting stuff on on Twitter about, you know, asking questions about PvP as a whole. Do you think it's something that's going to be touched on? For sure. I, 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 
yeah i think it's definitely gonna be looked at from a stasis standpoint for sure like balancing wise like they're definitely gonna look at shadow dive like it, it, honestly like they kind of have to like I, I feel like they're at a point where they know the only thing going on in the game right now like I, like the only reason like the player population is what it is right now i think is because of like pvp like i, I don't know maybe this is okay. gonna, i'm kind of okay. i'm kind of i'm kind of biased right now <laughs> like it's probably it but that's, like, that's my favorite answer I've heard so far. <laughs> I've I've never really been into uh like Grandmaster Nightfalls or anything like that. And it is because I don't like PvE. It's because I just don't really think it's worth it. And I mm -hmm. think that like like I, I know you can get ascendant shards and all kind of stuff. So if you need that, great. Like it's definitely a good way to farm exotics and stuff. But like for someone who has been playing the game for forever, you know, which most people who are still playing the game now have been. You know, yep. you're not, most most of the population right now are all old players who've been playing for years. Um, they usually have a lot of stuff. And they usually have every exotic in the game. So, like, for those players, I personally am not going to run, you know, GMs or anything like that because I don't need the materials. And right. I feel like and that kind of goes back to what we we're saying is if they added some kind of replayability, you know, where there's more incentives to do that kind of stuff, then sure. But for now, it's kind of like, like, I feel like right now the player population is what it is because people are just like playing pvp pvp like i don't really know what else there is to do in the game honestly right you know right like right now because they're, they're trying to do this whole like weekly thing where they like you know it's like space out the content like i get that you know you don't want everything to just blow through it in a week um but yep. you know at the same time it's kind of like i don't know like they're, they're they're not coming out like we thought we we're gonna get the hawk moon quests and that kind of stuff but like right. that's not here yet and i feel like everyone at this point has kind of already grinded the lost sectors for the exotics which i think was a really cool way i think if they expanded that you know into more stuff where you can just you know it's like okay you grind this lost sector you know you get this piece of armor you have a chance for it to drop or, or whatever it is it could be lost sector it could be a strike it could be anything yep. you know I, but i do like how they're kind of like specifying you know what you get from doing this that, that is kind of cool so i hope they bring that mechanic into more stuff in the future absolutely but, so funky's yeah. got a question uh he said, do you think stasis is in a good place? If not, what would you change? Uh, that's an <laughs> interesting one. Yep. Um, I mean, it depends on, in terms of PvP, I feel like it's, you know, stasis itself isn't really, I feel like it's in a good place itself, but when it comes to, you know, aspects and fragments and the things they provide, it kind of, messes it up a little bit the balance okay yeah i think pve wise like that's kind of why destiny is in a tough spot right now because like in d1 you know they had like two different teams they had a PV pvp team and a pve team but they don't really have that in d2 in d2 they just have sandbox team and so they kind of have to deal with both which kind of sucks because like they want to make stuff super super fun pve but at the same time it kind of has to be limited for pvp right um yep. so yep. what i think i think in pvp stasis is interesting i don't it, it's destiny is highly based on like movement and you know like 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 map awareness and all that kind of stuff and like when when you're like an fps and like you can just freeze people it kind of just like throws all that away <laughs> um, right but at the same time, like, it's not super hard to play around. Like, you can learn, you can just adjust to it, you know what I mean? And so you can play around it. I think if they were to, like, to totally, like, they can't really just get rid of freezing people because, like, that's kind of what stasis is. So I don't really know how they could rework it to where it doesn't do that. Like, maybe just slowing, but I feel like that would kind of lose, it, lose its appeal in PvE. So I feel right. like they can't really do that. Um, but I feel like, honestly, it's in a pretty good spot. There's a couple things that needs to be tweaked. Most notably, definitely Shattered Eye for the fragment. It's really not Shattered Eye, it's just the, the Fisher's fragment, which oh, makes it dude. like, you know, thank the radius you. and the damage massive. Yeah, it's thank not- Thank you. I, well, thank so many you, people are like, you. so many people are like, oh, they need to nerf Shattered Eye. It's not Shattered Eye. It's like, oh, there's like Shattered Eye just needs to cool down and it'll be fine. I'm like, that will literally do nothing for, yep. for, what, for what the problem is. Like that will do absolutely nothing. Like people, if you could just Shattered Eye, you know, twice in every five seconds, well, you know you're still gonna get one shot once with a grenade you know so it's like yeah, it, exactly. the, the cooldown isn't gonna do anything like maybe it'll be cool i guess but like you're not complaining about people using shattered dive as a movement you know you're complaining about mm -hmm. getting one shot by a nade so the problem is really just that fragment if they nerf that range 
and that radiate or the damage um i think it'll be a lot more balanced like i don't think that thing should ever one shot a super like there have been so many rounds and trials <laughs> where i have like 1v3 clutch just because like i have a grenade and it's just stupid right like, yeah, it, it's just dumb and like when you're i gotta say when you're playing stasis or when you're playing hunter like it's not as tilting because like you can do it too you know what i mean so if someone shadow yep. dives you it's like ah whatever you know i just wipe their team with the last round so it's fine or something like that you know what i mean but like when i was like playing top don this i was getting mad because like i would genuinely like outplay someone or something and then they would just like throw a grenade and just like murder me and i'm just like ah, right sick. Um, <laughs> sick so like i i totally see how it's annoying so like yeah i don't think that should be a thing because honestly it's kind of annoying on titan too it's not as easy to pull off but like it's definitely you know there on titan so it's really again that just kind of shows you it's not shatter dive it really is just the you know the the fragment so the whisper I, yeah yeah i think it'll be good also on shatter dive it should not have damage resistance at all like, why is that a thing there it is but like what, what, like uh, yeah it's so stupid because this on top of it right like like let's say you truly outplay someone right like you know they're gonna shatter dive you like you bait them into it like you're gonna shotgun and you're like hi yeah like totally just got this dude and he just takes your shoddy shot because he has extra <laughs> right, resilience he slams from just the ground smashing the air <laughs> like it's so stupid like it, that'd be like if i got extra resilience from like like icarus dash with don blade like that's that's pretty much what that is you know what i mean it's just yeah, dumb yep. so like that shouldn't that should not be a thing um and, and then they should take that resilience and then put it on the super because the super has none right now and it should have some and shattered Hive has resilience but the super doesn't which doesn't make any sense to me so i think they should put the resistance on the hunter super and then that's i think it'll be pretty balanced if they take it off shattered Hive and then nerf the fragment and i think the only other thing that needs to be adjusted is the titan super because it's just kind of like it's very beefy and lasts forever <laughs> um, <laughs> like you can i remember like i've headshot it before like with a sniper and it only does like it like takes off a shield and like a chunk of its health but like that's it, it doesn't leave right. it one shot like you still gotta wail into it like and, and it's hard to hit you know because it's so laggy because like the servers can barely like keep yeah. up with it because it's flying yep. around everywhere so um it's definitely like that's definitely something i need to look at um other than that i think everything is pretty pretty balanced um okay. in turn yeah they just nerfed all that i think it would be in a good spot i think you know just just those little things no but what you got to add <laughs> I mean, honestly, I was going to say the exact same thing. So <laughs> like, I'm just you know, glad that both y'all didn't not say Shadow Dive. <laughs> you know, aspects, fragments that make it insane. Yep. Is there anything you'd think that would uh, um, make it a lot more balanced from a PvP? Uh, words hard. <laughs> a PvP perspective, Nova, what? to uh, um, make it a little more balanced? Well, PvE, I mean, obviously at all times when you think of a PvP pers pers whatever. <laughs> it's not just me. Perspective, <laughs> you have to think of it in a, a PvE perspective as well. Right. So, yeah, like you were saying, like, you know, um, making all abilities slow. Yeah, that yeah. would be, uh, it would it would make PvP a little less annoying. But at the same time, you have to think about in PvE, you know, none of your abilities, you know, freeze except for your super. So... I mean, sure. in terms of balancing it a little bit more, I mean, I don't really know. Just, uh, I don't mean, I don't really know, honestly. I mean, <laughs> it's because it's, it's so hard when you have to think of it from two perspectives. Right. Um, all right, we're gonna all, uh, I got one to build off of that and then we'll jump in back into the questions from chat. Um, so I had boy on here a while ago mr boy himself um yeah. and he made the suggestion what if we put something like pvp behind a five dollar paywall and that money went directly into a pvp specific sandbox team so that we could have split sandboxes do you think that that's something that would work do you think that that's something that uh would be useless wouldn't be paid for do you think it would affect the ecosystem mm. I I remember I've heard him talking about that. I feel like I don't know. Okay, they needs. I don't think they should do PvP. I think it should be like something specific, like maybe trials or something like that. Because like sure. if it's just all PvP, I feel like new people aren't really gonna play PvP because like you know like new players like hear about Destiny at least right now because of the PVE. You know what I mean? And then they get into PvP later. At least that's what I've seen for the most part. You know, no one's like, I'm going to buy Destiny to play Trials, you know, what I mean? <laughs> like, you know, so like most people don't do that. 
So I feel like if they just if they just blockaded everything off a of paywall off the bat, people would be like, why the hell would I pay five dollars for this? Like, I'm just gonna go run strikes. You know what I mean? Right. So like, I feel like if they did everything, then they would be kind of kind of productive. But at the same time, um, I feel like that would be good. But I also feel like that's something Bungie's never gonna do, um, unfortunately, because I just feel like. I don't want to say they don't care about PvP, but like, you know, like it, they've they've made it clear it isn't like their first interest or their first priority, you know. So I yep. feel like that's just something they wouldn't realistically do. Um, but I feel like it would be good. Like that would be a good idea, you know. If if we actually had a set, you know, team for that or like set updates, that would be fantastic. And I think it would make the game a lot better. But I don't know what Bungie's like like thinking of it is. Maybe they just think that like it's too far gone for them to like you know. Like put it like put a lot of effort into it maybe or something like that i don't know um but i feel like there's been a lot I mean, maybe now it could be different you know maybe they're making changes next season and stuff but like we've been asking for a lot of stuff for like you know years even yep. you know and it's and it's taken a while like even buffs and stuff like that like when you look at like something like warzone you know what i mean i, I don't get me wrong i know it's a bigger studio and it's all and, you know it's different but like if you look at something like warzone they nerf like guns in like two weeks like if there's a broken gun they will nerf it immediately and it's like <clears> dmr <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly yeah. dmr yeah and so and then like bungie like it took them like like a year to like nerf like one on mask and it's mm -hmm. like you know what i mean and so there's a lot of like i don't want to say it's because they can't do it i think it's just because pvp isn't really their like biggest interest you know what i mean so sure. um yeah, but I, I think that would be good. I think if they locked it behind a paywall, maybe like trials, maybe like maybe not Iron Banner. Actually, maybe Iron Banner, you know, because that's what brings a lot of casuals in. If they lock it behind a paywall and then like, but not like a super expensive one, like you said, like five dollars, and then they add good loot for people to actually play it. You know what I mean? Give it a reason. Then, Do you think that would play off as yeah. a pay to win though, or something like that? Like it may get. Um, he says, I could uh, totally see that, but I think if they market PvP as like an, an, a kind of an expansion. And they kind of show that they're going to put effort into it rather than something that's just intrinsically in the game i feel like then people wouldn't really complain you know what i mean like if they show like hey we're going to use this money to like update pvp we're going to make it good we're going to do all that i don't think people would complain if uh, about it being pay to win now if it was like you know they put like like i don't know just like the best guns in the game in like from iron banner and it was like here pay ten dollars to play iron banner then like yeah it's different yeah. but um if it was just because you know like uh, kind of a mutual understanding with the community saying hey you know this is because we we want to make crucible better for you i think it's this, we think this would be good and plus it kind of deters cheaters too i guess you know a sure. bunch of accounts too banned you know they don't really it's not that much money but you know they don't really want to spend like five dollars every single time their account gets banned um fuck so. it let them <laughs> let them yeah. if it funds yeah. the team um all right <clears throat> like i said what about putting it behind something like uh rumble comp iron banner and trials for uh, the, five, the five dollars yeah mm -hmm. rumble comp iron banner and trials i don't think rumble needs one yeah. i feel like i feel like a lot of people play rumble so i feel like like a lot of like free to play people like i feel like whenever i go to rumble it's kind of just like a bunch of gyms it's like gym right. round we're just like you know <laughs> straight out of the first mission and they're like doing the shacks mission or whatever it is like when they I'm first jealous. Load in. every time i go yeah. into rumble it's all soros and oh really spamming I haven't played in a while, so maybe that's why. Uh, <laughs> but um, but yeah, no, I think I think Iron Banner comp would be good too. Like if it, like if comp has a lot of potential. Like I like the game mode itself. It's just like again, there's no incentive to play it. True. So if they made it so it was actually like you know solid to play and there was a reason to play it, I feel like more people would play it and the paywall would work out. You know, if True. they added, I don't want to say they added like pinnacles. Damn, I had a really good idea for comp, but I can't remember what it was. It was like. <laughs> Yeah, I, I can't remember. Oh, I think it was like, maybe, I think it was like um, every, oh yeah, they add like, so let's say they add like a gun loophole. I'm just gonna use Ice Luna, for example. Let's just say they, they brought it back or something like that, or Palindrome or whatever, and they only add it to comp. So if you win matches in comp, it has a chance for you to drop or something like that, right? And then every time you rank up, it's a guaranteed to drop. And then let's say you go, let's say you get to the legend, um whenever you play a game of legend if you win it like it's guaranteed to drop every single game so if you just want to keep farming games of legend like you can do that or like you know what i mean like there's just different ways to farm it you know it doesn't have to be exactly that but i'm just trying to think of like different ways they can add some replayability or whatever to the game you know um yep. but i think that would be really cool as if they is if they added that stuff like that um but then i then i think a five dollar paywall would be worth it you know i think 
if you get all those game modes and they put effort into them then for sure but i think if it's if it was just like all right we're gonna make pvp five dollars and keep and like how it is right now i think that would be rip off right if they gave you specific stuff to pay for and, and almost made it like a, a separate part of the game itself yeah if they advertised it as like hey you know there's this cool thing called pvp and we want to make it like good and you know and it's going to be like a, if they kind of advertise it as like an expansion or like a you know not just a not like just a plug PvP at all. yeah exactly i think that would be really solid nova what would you like to see with it nova yes mic issues <laughs> yes mic issues I'm excellent the past minute like I've had like issues with my audio. Have you been talking just in deafness? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, wow, Nova's quiet. I'm like really quiet. <laughs> that was that was saying something because I know how much yeah. you love to talk. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean, I I think it'd be cool. I really would. I would. I know I would absolutely pay for. Um. I would absolutely pay for five bucks to be able to play. You know. If it if it helped out and gave us specific loot and things like that, I think that'd be huge. Yeah, I think I, most people like, would pay for it. I think that, you know. I don't know. Like I feel like most people like would they pay for that? I don't know because I feel like a lot of people just be like the game modes crap right now. Anyways, why would I pay five dollars for it? I don't know. Like I I experience a lot of people mm -hmm. like in the chat who are just like like who just like don't really care about PvP, but like they like watching it. You know what I mean? They don't really like necessarily playing it. So like. I don't know like maybe you know like maybe that would be good but i also feel like that could flop too and like i don't know i guess it would, we wouldn't really know until it happens you know um right so it, it could be solid for the game i think if they advertised it like we said you know where it was like a separate um you know little expansion kind of thing or something like that where they like were really gonna put effort into it but i feel like if they were just kind of like you know pay us five dollars to play pvp i feel like a lot of people would be like mad about it you know if they're oh, just like we need you know because I, I feel like bungie like they make i feel like they make a lot of money you know what i mean like i feel like a lot of people think like oh like they're a smaller company but like you know think about it you know like beyond light was 40 bucks you know right. which was same same price as forsaken so it's but like, if you look at uh so this is one of my favorite things i've done a lot of research on game design costs just because i'd love to hear like how much is spent especially on things like cyberpunk Mm -hmm. um the average game now costs anywhere between 500 and 600 million to design with voice actors with game designers with graphic studios with you know um playability testers obviously it's starting to become more expensive to create a game than it is to make a movie mm -hmm. oh i mean i think i thought yeah that, that makes complete sense yeah because it's so, like yeah it adds up. more into it yep so it they're actually finding out now that if a game is a flop um it actually will make or break an entire studio especially an indie type studio like if they invest that much money into it and people buy it things like cyberpunk right the amount of money that was invested and they had to refund all those people like it's gonna take them a lot to bounce back from it well like if you look at something like cyberpunk the reason why it was so bad was because it was rushed and like um i if that game if that game came out like six months from now i feel like it would be really really solid but like the bugs made it like bad you know what yep. i mean that's the and the, the optimization made it bad too like yep. so many people bought it on consoles and they promised it was gonna look great and then it looked like a playstation 2 game you know what i mean right so like um at that point you kind of you kind of just have to be like i don't know that that's a tough situation for a developer for something like cyberpunk you know because like everyone wants you know the game to come out so you already delayed it once and like you know they're gonna get mad if you delay it again but i feel like that's also like you know it's gonna hurt you you know more than it's gonna help you to put it out now agreed you know i don't know it's definitely i see where you're coming from too you know it's definitely like you gotta be careful what you're doing because you know if it flops you know you lose, lose a lot of money at the same time but i mean i don't know because like we you, so for example if you look at bungie you can calculate the sales for beyond light you know because i'm sure that data is somewhere but you can't really calculate the sales for Eververse or anything right. like that on top of it. So it's kind of like, I don't want to say like, you know, they're, you know, we don't like they're making a ton of money, you know, but I feel like they're definitely like not like in trouble. You know what I mean? Like, I feel mm -hmm. like they, you know, they, they have money to do it. I just, I just personally don't think 
their mindset is on pvp and i don't blame them you know it's not a pvp game um they attended it to be pve pvp was kind of just like a side thing um but at the same time it's like when they did you know when the game was doing great like forsaken for example um if you look at what we got during that time period it wasn't much we got like a couple maps and some new like crucible vendor armor and i think that was it um so like you know it wasn't anything too crazy and maybe like i guess you could say the pinnacle weapons too um but yeah you know we weren't getting any crazy new game modes or anything like that you know so i feel like right now it's kind of we need just more like incentive or more like reason for people to play pvp and that yeah. will bring the population up and i feel like if we can have that then bungie would be more um inclined to kind of work on it you know yeah absolutely uh nova your mic working yeah it's good there he is uh what do you got to add to it um but yeah uh so when bungie when it in terms of like bungie adding incentive to you know playing pvp and expanding the player base i feel like um you know um you know people not everyone tends to want to play even with incentive um not everyone even chooses to play pvp um and not everyone chooses to play pve yep but uh you know i i kind of like the new system um I wish they would expand on it more where uh, basically you get loot and you can choose how you gain the loot. Like, you know, Gambit, Strikes, Crucible. And I feel like, you know, if they expanded upon that, um, sure. you know, people would be able to choose what they wanted to do. Um, but at the same time, that could, uh, you know, lower the player base in certain game modes. Like, I'm assuming most players wouldn't want to do Gambit, you know, over PvP or Strikes just to get a weapon right um but yeah in terms of like balancing the player base and increasing the player base uh definitely you know letting letting players do what they want to do to unlock loot would be good and bad in different ways true true um all right we got a question in chat zombie says what are your opinions on crossplay do you think it's uh, going to help the player base? Do you think it's going to hurt the player base? I think um, it's going to definitely help it for sure. Um, because I feel like the reason why Bungie doesn't really want to do a lot of game modes or anything like that is because the, the population is so small, you know? So if they increase that population, because right now it's like they don't want to split the population too much, right? Like they don't want to add some like crazy new comp competitive game mode if only like 100 people are going to play it, you know? Right. So like they, I feel like by allowing people to increase that player pool, then it's definitely going to help the game for sure. I think the only way it would hurt the game, like if you asked me this last year, without the new new gen, next gen consoles, I would say definitely no, people are going to be pissed about it. Like now people are playing on, you know, 120 FPS, the Crucible, which honestly sometimes even better than I can get on PC while I'm streaming. Right. <laughs> so like there's that. And there's also like, um, you know, now they have an FOV slider. You know, so I, honestly, I think people on consoles right now, our next gen consoles are chilling and I think they're in a really good spot. So I feel like it's definitely going to be beneficial. The only place I think it would actually hurt is with cheaters. Um, but again, I think if the population is like super, super high because of the cross play, then I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. And I feel like Bungie knows that as well. You know, I feel like they know in their heads thinking, okay, if we're going to do cross play, obviously cheaters are going to be able to play on, on like Xbox and PS4. Or at least against those people so i feel like they got like something you know brewing you know for them to mm -hmm. I, I don't really think they would just like openly be like hey you know we're going to just let cheaters ruin your gameplay experience you know um right. like I, I feel like they you know they know deep down you know well i mean they just, sued a, uh, they just sued a cheating company um yeah and then, yeah i did see that i did see that but like the problem with that is, is like i saw some like reply by him and he was like well we're just gonna make another company so I can't because it was yeah. like I can't yeah it was like I can't right. do it under the same name so like I don't really know how much money they were sued for you know I don't really know like if the details like that so well hopefully with Riot yeah. and Bungie going after him it was a it was a pretty chunk I mean they can prove yeah. that it chased people away for that reason oh um, for sure for sure all right I need to ask this because peace comma pathetic whatever you want to call him this week he says lemur do you style your hair before stream Oh, 100%, dude. <laughs> I don't, you think I'm streaming with a bedhead? Sure, yeah. What do you right, got streaming yeah. with a bedhead? 
<laughs> hey man all i'm saying is that uh my, my hair is like kind of long and like if i like don't do anything with it it just looks weird so i gotta like i gotta like, take a shower beforehand um, true. before like every stream but other than that it's a bit, that's it true um do you think actually that's a good point talking about the crossplay do you think it should be something like uh you can uh enable or disable if you want to play crossplay or do you think it should just be all on all the time and ready to go i mean yeah what you got, Maddox? i don't know i mean uh, that's a that's a iffy i mean i it wouldn't really matter though right because you know pc has i mean i guess it would but you know pc has controller players and m &K players and sure. uh i mean i i don't really know i mean in that case it would really lower it would make matchmaking a lot harder um than if you know if everybody could play with each other and they had to then there would be more players in each uh playlist right so you know having giving players the option to turn you know if you're talking input versus platform, that's a completely okay. different issue. But um, yeah, but I mean, if you have somebody using a sim, it's still just showing up as yeah, um, that's, a controller. That's true. That's true. You know. Um, yeah, I mean, I think the question that we gotta ask ourselves right now, or like with that kind of question, is do we like it's pretty much it's Bungie forcing you to play with players versus like you play with the players that you want to play with you know what i mean like it's kind of like why are they you kind of have to ask why are they adding crossplay to the game you know what i mean are they doing it because they want pc players to play with ps4 players or are they doing it because they want the population size to increase you know what i mean as a whole um and so at i, I don't really know how to answer that because i feel like there's there are very there are a ton of like benefits to turning on crossplay and just like making people use it um and the only like i mean maybe there might be some people complaining about m k but like honestly i don't i honestly think controller is really good in this game i don't think it's like you know you're at a huge disadvantage if you're not especially with the like maybe if you're on 30 fps definitely no but if, you know if you get 120 fps you got the fov controller is a really good option you know for sure, sure. so um I, I yeah I, I don't I don't really see too many people complaining about that but like I could see why people like if people complained about like the cheaters or something like that like if it was a big problem then I could see why they would want to like be able to turn it off you know what I mean and only turn Agreed. it on when you want to play with your buddy who's on PC or something like that you know Agreed. um so I don't know that's a tough question because it would increase the player size but like people might also be mad about it so I don't know I I, I think I'm under the impression right now that it's just gonna be on right um, i think, I think we'll have to, yeah, but. yeah i think we'll have to wait until next season to kind of see you know the levels and that kind of stuff like i feel like that might be more of a last minute call for bungie do you think they're you gonna know, launch kind of... next season or do you think they're gonna wait until witch king or which oh I, th I think witch queen for sure yeah I, I didn't think it was coming anytime soon i think it would they, they genuinely you know the trend for the past like you know a couple of years has been like let's let's yep. wait for the big expansion you know so i feel like they're for sure gonna wait um but but yeah, no, I feel like it's definitely going to launch with Witch Queen, and I think we'll have to see what the population is like at that time in the game in the game to like see if Bungie is just going to make it turn it on. And I think if it's what it is now, I feel like they'll definitely just manually, you know, leave it on auto, <laughs> leave it on all the time. Right. Yeah. Uh, but if the game's doing really well, they might they might consider you know not doing that. Uh, Chubby made a good point. He says D two community will always find a way to complain about new things. Do you think that that's why? Uh, the PvP community is so ignored is because we can't sync up on the same thing. Nova, what you got? I mean, yeah, that that is a good point. Um, he, that pretty much summed it up right there. I mean, when something new comes out, it's mi it's all mixed opinions. Oh, this could be good for the game, but oh, this is this is dumb. This is overpowered, you know. And then eventually bungie makes changes and then like, there's new things to complain about agreed i mean there's Later. all you're never going to satisfy everyone so but no do matter you think what that, you do do you think that if we all came together as one thing like i'll give the example of warlocks melee right we all came together pve and pvp and said this shit's broken and bungie fixed it within a week 
do you think that yeah. if we were able to do that with other things that we would see more of a reactive response from Bungie? Maybe. I mean, it just really depends on what it is that um, the complaints are about, but PvE players complaining about it definitely does probably play a factor. Sure. Uh, Lemur, you got anything to add to that? Yeah, um, I, I agree that I think if everyone complained about something, then yeah, for sure. Bungie does have to like do something about it. Like if you look at PvP, for example, like a lot of people, like even PvE players are complaining about PvP. So that's why I think they're definitely going to make some changes uh, this next season. Um, it, on that Warlock melee, I, I, dude, I don't know, man. Like they've never fixed anything that fast. And like we haven't seen <laughs> anything been fixed that fast since. Well, so, they're on like, engines, so that kind of... Yeah, that's that kinda true. That is true. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. I feel like part of me kind of wants to think that like they kind of knew they might have needed a nerf. You know what I mean? Beforehand, so they might have been ready for that. Right. Um, but I th like if you look at it though, right? If something heavily impacts PvP or PvE, sorry, they, they definitely get on it and they fix yep. it. Like if you look at like a Warlock Super that was broken and it can like one shot bosses and they found out about it like a week before the raid, you know, they put right. it into overtime and did everything they could to like, you know, fix it for the for the raid so people couldn't do that. But if you look at something like PvP where we have a similar a similar issue you know um with the titan super or like the titan subclass where you like just go off the map like you were like invisible you could kill people and all kind of stuff remember that that's why trials were delayed mm -hmm. for so long yeah. um like it took them like like five weeks to fix that and yep. it's kind of like it, it's kind of like uh you know why did that one take so long it, it, sure i'm not a game developer you know i don't know anything about coding I mean, I don't making know you feel bit, like an elusive you know? child yeah so <laughs> it kind of yeah it kind of just feels like you know there it wasn't really in their priority to like fix it immediately which i totally understand you know if that's not something they want to prioritize that totally makes sense but i feel like people also need to like keep that in mind that it isn't a priority for them so like if people yeah like, i i feel like that's a good point you know if people do complain about it then for sure i think it will definitely see some changes in the future you know so I, that's why like i said earlier i feel like pvp is definitely gonna get looked at because a lot of people have been like okay pvp needs some needs some work done well i mean because, people are leaving uh, because of it you know yeah yeah because like, I mean, like like i said like right now it's like there's really not much else to do and when you have when you have these big these big content drops people really just look to pvp to like you know do stuff to Especially you know because they're bored yeah like exactly it's, it, yeah it's really all there is to, to do in the game um like especially when the season like the season stuff this this season was so lackluster like the season of the hunt was just like it was not very good um mm -hmm. in comparison to like the stuff we, like even like last year like last summer i thought like the umbral engrams and everything like that i thought that was way better than the season of the hunt stuff dude i um, had lost so many exotic engrams because of those stupid umbrals. oh yeah okay. so yeah I think we all did. I definitely exotics. Did. yeah from the postmaster i definitely did but all yeah right. i definitely think that system was way better than what we have now but it's just like um it's people are looking at pvp now you know because there's not much else to do you know yep so, which is which is how it works out is is once people finish the low man activities and pve and things like that everyone goes to pvp yeah that, exactly. that's 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 why i think pvp is integral for this game honestly um is because it gives people something to do when there's nothing else in the slow times and yep, i sure. feel like it's lost uh the cutie maddox has a question for you both he says the top three things you want to see changed in the pvp meta quality of life what are the top three things if you had to pick three i know there's a fat um, list but for me number one right now okay well is it like are we talking like everything pvp or like just trials specifically or what uh pick what you main on so that that'll give you the best chance to to talk okay. a little bit more about it you know obviously yeah sure okay so for trials right now i think we can all agree it is a really slow game mode and it's not supposed to be it's kind mm -hmm. of been turned to this slow game mode where especially with stasis you know and, and you have these these abilities that you can get punished so hard if you make a mistake um and people just I, i've played games where people just run like max discipline and literally never shoot their gun and that's like all i died to yeah. that game is and i lose because it, it, you just get so many grenades you know um for hunter shatter dive so yeah. i feel like right now if they find a way to take that aspect out of the game or not i say aspect i'm not even talking about stasis i'm talking about sword peaking right like playing slow if they can take that out of the game or just rework it somehow to where it's not a thing because like right now that like tremendously just 
like the fact that people can just be like oh yeah well i don't need to push i'll just sit in my spawn and just you know farm my super but that's why that if you come on chaos reach um you know we were talking about how it's a really good option that's part of the reason is because um it's a shutdown supers it's a shutdown super and supers like that and golden gun and other supers get their super much faster than something like stasis so if you combine that with like geomags and like max intellect you can literally get a super in like round two yes um, so it, it, if you just wait the whole round like you it, mean round two and three and four and five yeah exactly so <laughs> yeah it, it's really Every easy round. just to sit and spawn and like not move so um when you're playing entire games like that like i'm okay if people play like that like you know once a card like it's whatever you know it's their flawless game they want to go flawless i totally get that but like when you're playing teams where like like that's all they do and like you're kind of forced you're kind of forced to have to play it too because if you try to push them and they have stasis you know what i mean like yep. you're just gonna get shatter dived and so and then on top of that it kind of goes hand in hand with 120s too um i think 120s are really good and i like how they switched up the sandbox and at the same time i think that um they're a little oppressive right now like i i think that the fact that you can like hit people to the head for like 90 from like across the map is just like crazy like i think yeah. i like how they the like they gave it yeah they gave it a range buff and an rpm buff i think it should have been one of either or the so range. i feel like i feel like if they made them 110s but kept the range that would be fine or if they kept them as 120s but nerfed the range a little bit that would also be fine because right now it's like they, like i think 140s feel awesome but it's like there's no reason to run it right now because i could i'm just gonna get yep. you know destroyed by a 120. oh so, so on the opposite I, side i run nothing but dire and i outgun 120s at uh, range obviously see, i see i don't know i played a ton of people who just <laughs> yeah if you're at range yeah exactly but if you're not if you're a little bit out of range you're doing like 40 to 50 and they're doing right. 90 and you're yeah, just getting exactly. smacked so that's why it's annoying it's like it, it I, I would be fine maybe if they maybe they could even maybe even buff like 140 range maybe that would help i don't know let's do some testing um but i feel like that'd be a good idea too but definitely like right now for sure um it's uh it's pretty nuts so i feel like if they that probably would be like number two for me it would be 120s kind of need of a need a little bit of a touch um you know then sword peaking and emo peaking you know because that slows it down and then i guess stasis which is what we talked about earlier it, it, probably those three things for trials is it, kind of what's what's probably the most annoying for people is the fact that people can just not move in the spawn right it, they kind of all three mesh together and form this one yep. big super problem that people don't like um and so it, it's kind of like people don't move and they sword peek but so they can see in the lanes before they peek them so um you know if they see someone's gonna snipe down the lane they're not gonna they're not gonna peek that lane and they're just gonna sit there um if you try to push them or even move at all you know they have the range on you one so um they're just gonna use their 120 and just sit back and just like or the team shots too. team shots are deadly with those things right yeah like literally one two three all of you guys <laughs> the same guy they're dead like boom you know they're pretty nasty so um that does not help it at all either so that's the, the second problem and the third problem is if you somehow do manage to close the gap and you you know you can push them or whatever maybe you're better shotgun than them and you can slide and get the kill like they just shatter dive you and you just die you know so it's kind of like yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think those are the problems plague and trials right now. I feel like those are probably the three quality of life things I would like to see change for sure. Sure. No, what you got? What's your three things? So yeah, um, I was basically gonna like say almost the exact same thing. Like you know, um, the play style right now is really slow, especially you know for me because I really like shotgunning and pushing in, playing fast. Um, but I feel like you know, with shatter dive and stasis in general, I feel like um my play style is being completely shut off you know like sure when i want to push in i get shatter dives um whenever i want to sit back i get team shot 120 and empowering rifts yeah it's annoying um <laughs> yep and while i'm while i'm not able to push in they're charging up their chaos reaches with gmx so yep. yeah it's, yeah it's it's you just see people <laughs> running into walls and just getting their super and it's like yeah. ah cool <laughs> um you yeah, know it's definitely it definitely something that's annoying and like I, I totally get why people are doing chaos reefs too like i don't blame them i think it's a really good subclass and i like it i just feel like so many people are doing it because of stasis you know which makes sense it's a pretty yeah. good counter you know because you literally get a super you know like what like every you can probably get like three or four a game freeze on like the low side you know like if you're playing super slow and not moving definitely get like four or five um so yeah no it's uh those are probably my three uh just as slow how slow trials is it's definitely uh 
it's very it's slow. It's very slow. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm gonna build off of it. Uh, obviously, stasis has been the uh, the base topic. Um, Chibs is a PVE main that doesn't that's trying to learn PVP as well. Um, but obviously, with everybody talking so negatively about stasis, uh, it pushes him away. So he says, um, "Do you think that PVP is so bad because people can't adjust to stasis, or is it really that broken?" And be honest about it. Like obviously Nova said, I can't push with a shotgun. Do you think that that's a not willingness to adjust and bait something that you know is coming? Um, yeah, no, I, I think it's like a mix. Like, like you sure you can totally bait people, you know, and like bait out their shatter dives. Like, like I was saying, like you can you can do that. You can outplay people and be like, I know they're gonna shatter dive. So like I'll shotgun someone before they shatter dive, right? Before they even hit the ground for the nade. And I still will not kill them because they have like damage yeah. just to. So I, <laughs> right. I feel like it's really because a lot of stasis right now is broken. Um, and you can outplay it. It's not like you can't. Like you can totally bait nades. Like I've done it before. You're like, oh, the guy's gonna smash. So you don't peek a doorway. Then he wastes it. And then you can totally push in. Um, but like, it's a lot to think about when you already have like everything else on your mind. Just from like, if you look at stuff that we had to think about like before, you know, stasis came out. Just for like playing scrims, like team shotting. You know, like this guy gonna come mm -hmm. to my left my right you know what i mean like it's just like your general like thoughts going on during a game and then you also have to include like stasis does he have a nade and all this kind of crap on top of it it's like or does he have two shurikens or like what kind of nade does he have am i gonna get frozen in a dust field right. you know what i mean like all that kind of stuff like it kind of adds a lot of thinking to it and i feel like that thinking would be fine if they nerfed it a little bit like we talked about earlier where these abilities weren't a really big problem because yeah right now it's really just like you know like you can't really push anything because like yeah even if you try to outplay the guy like the range is still massive on shatter dive so even if you think you're out of range like you might not be <laughs> you know so it's like i know that's happened to me before i'm like oh i'm gonna bait him i'll literally say it out loud i'm like oh, i'm gonna bait this guy then i die anyways i'm like oh, yeah. sick. i'm gonna um, bait him and i didn't <laughs> yeah it's it, so i i think you can definitely get better and i think it's a good time to play pvp just know that like just try not to crutch on stasis too hard because like it's gonna be it's definitely gonna be nerfed like it's next season for sure, for sure. So, um, so I would say learn everything you can right now, and then eventually, you know, it's gonna, it's definitely gonna change. It'll get a lot better. So, you know, just uh, try to use things that aren't, you know, aren't gonna get nerfed. You know, so like the base subclasses or even the aspects of stasis that aren't broken. You know, and get used to those because you can definitely outplay people. With that I think like the cool, cool outplays are like when people dodge and throw their shuriken. Like it's annoying, but I think that's fun. You know, right. when like when you like, yeah. out, but like not like. A pega like smash the nade and just like get <laughs> killed you know <laughs> like, so uh, it's definitely i had a uh, um i'm i'm on the opposite side where you can i feel like you absolutely can beat stasis and it reminds me of back when tether was first introduced in d1 you know everybody complained about the tracking on the tether the speed of the arrow the I remember um, that. the smoke grenades killing way too fast things like that and it was all the same it almost sounded like the same spiel as what we're hearing with with stasis so for the last week i went into quick play in sixes and i ran spec blades and i ran a 140. and i still top fragged and we won most of the time but i had to play a lot more map awareness you know i'd be like okay i know that this is a lane that everybody pushes through there's six stasis hunters on their team i know that they're going to throw their grenades at this corner right so I jump in, jump out, and get away. And we spent the last week talking about um, ways to counter it, you know? Things like Icarus Dash, right? Where if they throw a nade and you can dash backwards and get away from it and clear it out. Or same thing with the Titans, you know, Behemoth Movement for melee. You can launch yourself away from the nade and get away from it and then go back and engage because most of these guys that are using stasis don't know how to play the game without an ability <laughs> for lack of yeah. a better term yeah no i i, I agree I, I think like you like we said it can definitely be outplayed you know it, it's it's not like like you can definitely get easy kills with it if you don't really know what you're doing the crucible you can just throw a grenade and smash it or mm -hmm. you could definitely like outplay it if you know you do know what you're doing you know so that's different um however at the same time the problem arises right when it's like a good player yep who's using it because what they will do is they'll just use their primary to like to gun you down first or they're like you know have their shotgun out and if they look like they're gonna lose a gunfight they that's when they just throw an aid on the ground and smash you and it's just like a free kill you know yep. what i mean 
So those are the players that are like harder to play around are the are the ones that don't lead into gunfights with it. You know what I mean? They kind of like sure. lead with their gun. And then if they that look if the, the outlook look is looking kind of bleak, that's when they use it. It's kind of like a last resort kind of Panic thing. throw. Those are the ones that I found like like I have a I don't have a clip, but I remember I played this guy like I, I was literally I was literally just aping him with a shot because he wasn't even looking at me and he was like gunning down someone else. So I was just running at him or like I hit him with primary, made him one shots. And then like before I could even like get close to him with a shotgun, he just realized he was gonna die. So he just jumped in the air and naded me and he came out alive and I died. You know what I mean? Yeah, so it's right. just like it's just like stuff like that where it's like, <clears throat> you know, um, so you can definitely outplay it and play around it. Um, like for sure, like at the start of trials matches and stuff, you know, it's like I know this dude just gonna run in here and nade us, so let's split apart. Um, but it, it kind of like later on when you aren't sure if they have a nade, you know, when it's like round three, right. you know, or if it's like, you know, you're in the middle of a gunfight with them, you're getting kind of close and you're like, ah, shit. Well, like, do I shotty them? Do I push in? Because I can <laughs> get a kill right now. You're trying to check their discipline, yeah. figure it you out. Know? <laughs> yeah, it, it's like, it's definitely a lot to think about. Um, but I think if they didn't have that crazy, as if, if it wasn't as OP as it is now, then it would be a lot easier to outplay. If that makes sense. Like, it's easier to outplay the shurikens. And it's easier to outplay dust field nades and behemoth you know melees and all that kind of stuff but like i think the thing that's really oppressive right now is the titan super and the mm -hmm. glacial nade you know explosion crap so if that stuff gets nerfed i feel like it'll definitely be a lot easier to outplay and a lot easier to play around which is like what you were saying um like i feel like six is just different you know what i mean like it's just like well six it, is really way hectic. more chaotic with stasis, yeah, it's just you know? yeah exactly i just feel like it's really hectic so like if people don't really care as much if they if they you know waste their nade and that kind of stuff so they're not gonna like pull you know what i mean like i don't know at least for me like whenever i play i'm kind of just like whatever um because it doesn't really matter but if i'm playing trials like like I, there were literally like when i played hunter and i know we're playing other teams like abusing it there will literally be games where i straight up like like make sure i have a nade before i push <laughs> right and do yeah. in case you know what i mean like if i'm like okay like you know if they have a nade i don't i'm screwed so it's like i need to have one um yeah, so I feel like once they nerf it, it definitely a little bit easier to play. Yeah, Nova, do you uh, you feel the same? You got anything to add? Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, again, like I was saying earlier, um, as someone who plays very aggressively, I feel like changing, you know, with the nade changes um, later on, it'll definitely make it a lot easier. Sure. You know, to push in and make decisions quickly. So this will be, uh, we're in a little over on time already, but you guys' discussions have been absolutely phenomenal, so I don't mind. Um, <clears throat> my final question for it is, talking counter, counter strikes of stasis, what's some things you guys found that work well to combat stasis in competitive settings? So in like a survival, in like trials, things like that. What have you found that works well besides just baiting the corner and then pushing in? I mean, first off, obviously, you know, chaos reach, being able to farm your abilities against the other team, um, and also top don is very, very effective for being able to dodge uh, the different stasis attacks. So, I mean, mostly what a lot of things that Warlocks have, I've found are very good for that. Yeah, um, for me, like I'm, I'm definitely like a sniper main and that kind of stuff. I was like shoddy for a while when, when it first came out, when the season first came out, because like you know Hunter was crazy with the shadow dive nade, so I kind of shoddy for a while. But I definitely sniped, you know, for the past like year or so doing carries and that kind of stuff. So and especially this last weekend, what I found really worked out well was um, something that made Top Street on like so good, especially last season, and why people was like, oh, it's broken. Which, which is kind of crazy because like now it's I don't want to say it's like gone under the radar a little bit but like it definitely has in terms of like you know because last season so many people were like oh Top Tree Dawn's broken it needs a nerf I can't wait for them to nerf it and then they came out with stasis and now everyone's like holy crap I'm getting shattered dived all the time this is so annoying yep. you know what I mean so it's kind of been yeah. overlooked a little bit um but like you can just get to lanes like so fast and so oh, one yeah. of the things one of the things I did this weekend was I would everyone's running stasis so they're all pretty like if they're all hunters you know they're just they, i'm just gonna be faster than them for the most part because i'm a warlock and there's stuff you could do like you know you can bounce your head off walls and stuff like that with the stompies but like that's a different story um yep. but for the most part I, i'll get to the lane first and so people like don't really expect you to be there that fast 
and so they just kind of run across the lane because they're like it, like for example it's like when you spawn trucks and they spawn like c um over in mill and they're like going to b like on dead cliffs and i'm like on divider like i'm at divider before they even like cross the to, to b and so yeah. um what i'll I, I can literally just sit there and they'll just be jumping across and it's like easy picks just like right there and they, they so if you hit your shots you, you know what i mean that's i found that to be really effective this weekend it was like people just would not expect that and then yep. um also top three down two the same thing you know you could float different <clears> angles <throat> So you, you hit all these like crazy, crazy angles that no one really expects you to hit and you can see them in different areas and all that kind of stuff where people don't really expect that. So you can kind of get the jump on them before, you know, they get the jump on you, if that makes sense. So it's a good sure. way to counter stasis, if that makes sense. At least how I found it is by playing, I guess, more aggressive than they are because a lot of people don't expect that is because they're like, oh, I'm a stasis hunter. You know, I can smash everything. But if you, you know, get there first and kind of surprise them, you know, no one really sees that coming. And so that's a good way too. And this also works with Titan as well. Like the Stasis Titan is so fast. Like it is, I haven't really mastered it yet because I haven't played it as much. But like you can get to the lanes like as fast, like if not faster than a top trade on. Like with the melee and the slide and like the Titan skating stuff you can do. Like there are some ways you can definitely do it. Um, so Titan works too. Um, so it's definitely a good counter. Is like playing, I, that's how I've always played too. Like just, I've always just played fast. Like with snipers, like I, you know, I'll, I'll bash over a spot, get a pick, and I'll just run away. You know what I mean? That's kind of I've always right. played. So, <laughs> um, yeah, it's it works out really well, I think, is playing Top Tree Dawn or like maybe even Stasis Titan if you like, you know, want to get to an, an angle fast. But I mean, I guess if you really don't want to use Stasis at all, you know, like you just want to like, you know, like just, I don't know, be an anti-Stasis guy. Um, right. <laughs> I guess Top Tree Dawn is probably your, probably your best bet for sure. Like if I had to do like a subclass tier list, it would right now would probably be like Stasis Hunter and Stasis Titan, and then probably Top Street on like after that, in my opinion. Okay. Nova, how do you uh, compete with Stasis? Compete with Stasis, you say? Um. <laughs> so I mean, in terms of like movement and gameplay, obviously I try to be as fast as I can. Um, like Lima was saying, you know, getting to angles before the other team uh but in terms of like you know and then obviously with top dawn you have dashing which allows you to get places a lot quicker um basically just trying to play as unpredictably as i can in general so okay i mean obviously if you play if you just sprint forward w key you're probably going to get shatter dived or hit by something so right I try to, you know, I try to like zigzag around, you know, when I'm pushing lanes a little bit more. Serpentine, serpentine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I feel like if you play predictable with stasis, like, like sure, if you like have confidence in your gun skills, like maybe you can use your primary and just like sit back. But like, if you do what most teams do, where you just, you know, you spawn on one side, other team spawns on the other side, you go to the main lane, just kind of sit there. Like, it, it's really easy to like, just kind of get caught up in their game by just like sitting there not moving they're charging their abilities you know what i mean and they all just kind of push when they want like um it's definitely easy to like get caught up in that so i feel like you kind of do have to play in an unpredictable kind of fashion right. um to outplay stasis in my opinion it, which is good you know it, you know yeah. it, you change change shit up and like you know people are able to be like oh like you know like, how, why is he doing that you know like people don't do that <laughs> and, you know and so it's pretty cool but at the same time um it's definitely going to be a lot easier to play around once they nerf it next season. So, agreed, agreed. Um, all right, chat. We got time for one more question, and uh, and then we'll jump into the practical portion on if anybody wants to learn, not run the DS. If you want to learn from the guests themselves, make sure to type in chat. Let me know. <laughs> Kama says, "Lemur, do you have an OnlyFans?" Uh, exclamation mark OnlyFans in the chat. G <laughs> I have that command actually. No, I do too. That's what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> um, the only reason we asked that first off is uh, the only person that we've had on here that actually has an OnlyFans that posted it is uh, Nighthawk. Nighthawk. Yeah, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Nighthawk has an actual OnlyFans and he has a command in my chat now for that reason. That's funny. <laughs> It's pretty Ooh. good. I'm looking to see. Zero says he's getting your OnlyFans link right now. 
All right, so I got one more thing to ask from you guys. Uh, can you do me a favor? Go into my chat and type all your socials. Your Twitch, I mean, your sure. Twitter, your YouTube, your Insta, whatever you got. Um, type it in chat. And then chat, it is your responsibility to go follow these two for taking their time to come be with us, to answer questions, and uh, be all around good humans. I don't want to follow that Nova guy. Toxic. He played with Sweatsicle. <laughs> That's my favorite. Nova has a command in my chat as well for that reason. Oh no. Not this again. Perfect. Chat, go show some love to these two. Make sure to uh, hit those follow buttons, hit those subscribe buttons, whatever you need to do. Um, and yeah, let's uh, let's roll into the practical. Let's do it.